Welcome to TJ's podcast. Yes, yes. Sorry, I'm getting my uh, earbuds adjusted here with the volume. Rob's been playing with it, and he messed with the volume control. (laughs) TJ's podcast, where no subject is off limits. We talk about anything and everything as long as uh, it interests me, it interests you. It's the way it works. Uh, I, I don't mean to start things off. Uh, my friend Riggins is here. Uh, Riggins with scary news. I don't want you to be, there's no reason to be scared now. I know you would have been freaked out before, but you see that I'm okay. I'm here. I'm, not, I'm un, unharmed. But uh, over the little break we just took, um, I don't know how else to say this. I was, uh, I was almost um, sent to be with the Lord. Really? Yeah. The Lord almost called me home. We went and stayed a couple of days with my friend Mark, a.k.a. Mark, in the mountains of North Carolina. When I say in the mountains, I mean he lives in the mountain, on the mountain. Um, and we had gone to Denter, and it was uh, Mark driving. I was in the passenger seat in the front, and uh, my wife Jody was in the back seat. It was about, you know, a little after nine, I guess. And we were coming back home. We parked in his driveway. And his uh, his house has a deck that goes all the way around it. Like, it goes, the, the door that you enter the house into the living room is right off the driveway. And then it goes straight across that. And then it turns a corner, the deck does, and goes all the way around the front part of the house that looks out into the mountain. Onto the mountains. Well, I jump out first because I got to go to the restroom. And when I jump out and they're dilly dallying, getting out of the car, I see a shadow of something. Now, you know, I grew up in the country. I grew up hunting and fishing and all of that stuff. So I knew right away. I said, get back in the car. Because I had done come face to face with three black bears that were up on his porch when we pulled up. So I'm walking dead at them. Then they take off running, and they're, they come off the, the, um, the porch and then just go right down the hill. And I watched all three of them <laughs> taking off. Wow. So um, we go into the house. And then I got a flashlight because I wanted to go out and see where they were down on the bottom of the hill and just watch them. So I did. There were three of them, like I thought. And I watched them for a little while. And they went on about their business. Well, my friend Mark left something in the car that he had to go back out there and get. So he stepped out onto the, to the uh, side deck there, and he... Stuck his head back in. He said, get the light. I hear him walking out here. So I get the light, and I'm looking out over the edge, and I don't see him. He said, well, I swear I heard him. And then he turns the other way and just peeks around that corner and then takes off running back toward the door. Uh oh. And I said, "There's no, I thought he was messing with me. Said, There's nothing out there, but I was still running with him anyway. Yeah. We step in the house. And close the storm door, and as soon as we close it, the bear comes right there and looking at us through the glass in that storm door, mm. ready to eat. Ready to eat. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's scary. I know. So he went on about his business. It was, it was the same three bears. They were coming back because Mark feeds, he has bird feeders and yeah. stuff out there, and so... We had been out to dinner, and he hadn't taken them in yet for the night, and that's what they were up there trying to get. So he still got to go get whatever he left in his truck. So he took um, the light, the flashlight, and he took his little air horn that he has, and all the way out to his truck, he's going, wah, wah, yeah. wah. <laughs> Whoa. to keep the bears away. He didn't bring a gun with him or anything? He, is he a gun guy? 
Yeah, he's he's got guns. He but just wasn't that. He he's not as into it as I am with the guns. You wouldn't have gone out there without a gun, right? No, right. no, 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 no. Not I'm, if I knew that they. I was because where I was up on the porch looking with the light, I didn't know they were up there. But I wouldn't walk out, you know, close to the wooded area at all right. without a gun at that point. No. Yeah, I'm not even a gun guy, quote unquote. But I would not. Go out in the middle of the night when knowing there's bears around without a without a gun. No mm. way. Yeah. That's crazy. But he got whatever he needed out of the car. Mm -hmm. Was Jody freaking out? She was laughing. Oh, she thought it was funny? She was freaking out at first when she was part of the try to get in the house when you know there are bears around yeah. thing. But once she got in the house, hearing us shuffle around and laugh and, all, and ah, yeah. when they were that close to us. She had already gone back. She was watching. We were watching a crime show, and so she went back and was reading a book <laughs> in the bedroom. And she came out laughing. What is? What are you girls doing? Maybe the idea of you getting eaten by a bear is just the funniest oh. thing to her. Hilarious. <laughs> Hilarious. That's scary. Mm-hmm. Have to fight them off. Were they all the same size? The three? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Similar. They they look like last year they would have been traveling with their mamas. Yeah. With their mama. But they were big enough now they're out on their own. And they're fast, too. Mm-hmm. Real fast. Yeah. That's scary. crazy. Crazy, man. It's crazy. Um, okay, so we'll go into the, um, the stupid celebrity news quickly here. Um, because we have some. <laughs> the Miley Cyrus, Noah Cyrus... Is it Tish or Trish? Tish. Tish. Tish Cyrus situation has gotten a, a little bit more dysfunctional, I think, or a little bit more trashy. Yeah. Um, so let me make sure that I, I've got it right, Riggins, where uh, Noah was dating a guy who's older than she is. Noah is Miley's sister. Dating a guy that was for nine months who's, who's older than she is. They break up. And as soon as they break up, her mama, Tish, gets with the ex-boyfriend, and now they're married, right? Correct. Okay. Miley was married to Liam Hemsworth. Right. So over the weekend, Noah liked a thirst trap picture that Liam Hemsworth had posted on his social media. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of weird. And trashy. Uh-huh. If I'm dating somebody, or if I'm certainly married to somebody, and then we break up, I don't want any of my family maintaining relationships with them. No. That's like baseline. But what's even worse than that is liking, like, thirst traps that he's posting. Mm -hmm. and you're my sibling. No, 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 no. Yeah, that's because... That's not cool. Because wasn't that whole song about him that she wrote where she was saying, I can do, I don't need this. I got my own this and yeah. that and the other. What was that called? Flowers. Flowers, yeah. So, yeah. So now it's, it's not, it wasn't, it wasn't a friendly breakup divorce yeah. thing then, yeah. right? No. And Noah, after what she's just experienced with her mom dating her ex-boyfriend or marrying her ex-boyfriend you'd think she'd be a little more sensitive to the mm -hmm. the the what the optics of that the way they call it because now it's a tmz picks it up e online picks it up radar uh they all pick it up the daily mail so now it's like an international story that your sister has liked a picture a thirst trap that your ex-husband just posted it's weird it's just weird is it miley's ex-husband or is it noah's ex-brother-in-law it's you know, fair, they could yeah. have been close. He was my brother-in-law. We were close. Yeah. We're close. Okay, now, the picture of him, he was in a shirt. He was just in the mirror, took a picture, and they automatically called it a thirst trap. They did. Now, it's a thirst trap. He's clothed. He's not saying anything about working out or check out my arms or my abs or anything like that. It's called a thirst trap because he's good-looking. Yeah, yeah, it's also in the gym. He's, there's definitely right. an element of, like, look at me. Okay. Here's my question, though. Is it impossible for an, a dog-ass ugly person to post a thirst trap? Uh, yeah. The effectiveness of the thirst trap is, is questionable. But, yeah, you can post it <laughs> if you're dog-ass ugly, like you said. <laughs> 
like the chances would be uh, uh, anybody telling you that you are hot or ooh, yeah, you know, any just, of that they would probably just say he's posting a, you know good for him he's in the gym yeah 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 they wouldn't say or good for her you know she's she's in the gym yeah way to go girl it's a different kind of thirst that that you could be quenching absolutely but when you're a Hemsworth, I got a feeling like mm. everything he posts is probably like, oh, that's a thirst yeah. trap. Yeah, it's because you're one of the Hemsworth brothers, probably. The- right, any selfie is a, sure. is a thirst trap. Sure. Yeah. For a good looking person. Yeah. He just wrote leg day, hashtag leg day. Oh, he did? Yeah. Oh, well, then never mind. Then it was a thirst trap. I mean, he's a good looking dude, but yeah, he's definitely looking for some attention. Mm. Why do people make such a big deal out of leg day? Because, yeah, it's like the forgotten thing. I don't know anything well, about Well, no, it's because um, your legs are the, especially for guys, people, guys look at it where the leg muscles are not seen as much. So uh, it takes an extra uh, bit of dedication to do your legs. So you got a complete workout. Um, that's what they, you know, they call it uh, beach muscles. Whenever you see a guy who's built really, really well, muscly and all up top, and he has little skinny legs, skinny. chicken legs. Yeah. So it's a way to just say, this is how totally dedicated I am. Cause leg, leg workouts suck. Yeah. Nobody likes leg workouts. I do. I always like leg workouts. And it also, um, I mean, if, if you're a guy, I don't know about women, lifting weights because they're not supposed to be lifting weights so i never took time to study that um yeah you heard me ladies <laughs> uh, but he uh it, if men do it it also uh increases you know your weight loss potential and things if you're if because those are your biggest muscles and um and when you work out your biggest muscles and then you tear them down and they rebuild it helps with the entire process a lot more than if you're just doing upper body. Mm-hmm. So there's that. Now, this is something that uh, I've been interested in waiting for this for a while. But that Gypsy Rose um, and her her husband Ryan have uh, have taken to split. I'm heartbroken over this. Who would have seen it coming? <laughs> been a wild couple of weeks for gypsy rose mm-hmm. um but what is the, the the big update is is that he's finally speaking out he made a video about it and yeah, yeah, yeah. but then he didn't say a whole lot you know he made, he said a little bit and then he said but i will tell more i yeah. promise so does that mean he's trying to get a following and trying to trying to profit from his social media 100 percent, because she's got a show coming out on lifetime yeah and apparently they were filming a lot. And now she's hanging out with her ex-fiance. They're getting tattoos together. It's like two weeks ago, you got out of jail yeah. and you're you're now mar- living a happy life and you're talking about how his D is fire. Mm-hmm. And that now now he's on the internet, you know, thanking people. Do you want me to play it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is Gypsy Rose's estranged husband, Ryan. Mm-hmm. And everybody thought it was like super creepy. Right. Hey, everybody. I just wanted to say thank y'all for the support and the... And uh, nice messages I've been getting from people. Uh, I'm at a friend's watching WrestleMania right now. It's great. I'm enjoying it. You know, I've been a wrestling nerd for a long time. Uh, but I need to shave. But, um, you know, I just want to thank everybody for the support. It's been great. Uh, I'm just living my life, guys. Uh, y'all will see what really happened on Lifetime. Uh, we were filming a lot, so uh, stay tuned for that. And I just want to thank everybody for the support. Uh, if you support me, follow me. I will post more stuff eventually. Uh, I'm just just hanging in. I just want to say thank y'all to everybody, and you know, God bless. So All nothing. Right. Like you're, I'm going to fill you in about what happened. It's been yeah. three weeks. What are you talking about? <laughs> it's part of me thinks it's all a publicity stunt. You think? Yeah. Well, I know whenever she, we watch that documentary and, and, and my wife and I have seen all the Gypsy Rose stuff. Um, and 
when she said that she had, I think she had one boyfriend in jail. Then she had another one that was, maybe she was counting the first one that she killed her mom with. Um, but then she talked about in the documentary about being engaged to this guy uh, while she was in prison. So this is that same guy, I guess. Yeah. And, uh, and she talked about how much she loved him and, and all of this stuff. But then Ryan came along and she liked him better. And she broke up with, I think she broke up with the fiance she had to be with Ryan. They got married in a prison wedding, you know, the whole thing. I just, no matter how much I feel sorry for Gypsy, what all she went through as a kid with her mom being such a whack job and doing all those things to her, making her think that she was uh, sick and, you know, the surgeries and all of that. I mean, she lived in a prison her in her in, through her entire childhood. But you're, you're grown now. Anytime somebody in prison is looking at somebody through a glass and they just met that person through um, written correspondence or um, internet chats or whatever. And you're looking at them either through a glass or sitting at a little picnic style table inside of a cafeteria looking um, place in the prison. And they say, I want to marry you. Something's wrong with them. Uh, yeah. And if you say yes, something wrong with you too. Yeah. I'm more sympathetic to the person in jail because they're like, somebody loves yeah. me. I feel alone. I can kind of see how you'd be like kind of wooed over or wooed by this a person. But because, yeah, what's wrong with him? I think right. he's the weirdo. Now, not to say that you can't strike up a relationship with somebody who's, who's in the penitentiary. You meet them. You know, you do sure. your correspondence with you. Go meet them. You sit and do you know no touching each other, the visits and all that stuff. You get to know them. You know, you know what? When you get out of prison, um, let's take it a little farther. Don't you can start dating them after they get out of prison, but don't get married. Don't propose. If if you're gonna propose to somebody in prison, then then it's not for the right reasons. No, I don't think so either. So that would that would include both of these fellas. Yeah. The ex fiance and now what appears to be the ex husband. Yeah. And I don't know anything about this ex fiance, although all, the only thing is that he's now back in her life and they're holding hands and getting mm. matching tattoos. It's like something's wrong with him too. Oh, of course. Well, we go back to when he proposed to her in in the penitentiary. Yeah something's wrong with him yeah and now she's got a she's got her just got a nose job oh out. she did yes have they ha, have there been pictures of her uh just with the bandages with the bandages, with the bandages on that's gonna she make a huge difference you think oh yeah and so then she'll be almost. she'll be getting out getting away from him again she will be an ex ex fiance i guess yeah. i don't know leave him on but once curb. yeah once that nose heals when you get her to do a little something with her hair well, she dyed that blonde. I mean, mm -hmm. there's there are things, the wheels in motion. She's figuring it out. Yeah. Think. She's like, I'm going to go blonde. I'm going to get my nose done. I'm going to start dating all these guys. But it's a lot to go through a month out of jail when you spent the majority mm -hmm. of your adolescence locked up. Yeah. All of that. Well, what was she? It was seven years, six she, years she was in jail? She, was, she went in when she was 18 or 19, right? Yeah. No, I thought she was 20-something in her early 20s. Okay. I was thinking she was in jail seven years okay. in the penitentiary. Right. But either way. Mindset of a kid. Yeah. I don't care if you've been in in the penitentiary for five years or 50 years. Don't accept somebody's merit, marital proposal. I agree. Because it's not going to work. <laughs> no. I've always been a big wrestling fan. I'm just he's, <laughs> and like, what is he going to do? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And you know what? All of them have in common, right? Well, I don't know about the the ex boyfriend now, 
current boyfriend guy. Oh, what do they have in common? Yeah, they're from Louisiana. Remember, you can't. Oh, right. They're all from right. Louisiana. Love that. Love that. <laughs> uh, well, you know, because Gypsy and her mama, you know, got displaced with uh, Katrina. And that's how they ended up in Missouri or wherever they were yeah. when all of that killing happened. So that is something. That's kind of celebrity story to keep an eye on. Absolutely. Right what's there. next? I mean, what's what's going to be next for her? They got the show coming out on Lifetime. That's going to be like, hopefully it's nice and trashy. Like, that's what you want yeah. to see on reality TV. Mm-hmm. So we'll see. Because I kind of lost interest in, you know, yeah. uh, my attention span is not long at all. And so I'd kind of, we saw the documentary, we saw the series about, you know, gypsy rose and then we watched the documentary and i was done after that yeah 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 but now (laughs) it's kind of when remember when uh joey botafuco when he was in jail and they let him out and he immediately does a reality show Mm -hmm. with the woman that shot his wife yeah um and that was all like a pr thing so this feels very staged like you're gonna leave your husband for this the ex-fiance we're just Mm -hmm. gonna get your hair blonde we're gonna get you a nose job it's could like be, whole, yeah. yeah. I could easily see that. And, you know, not saying they're from Louisiana and that's why they accept it, but when people are selling you all these ideas and they're like, we're going to make you a star, we just mm-hmm. got to do all these things. I'm like, okay, hell yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, we will do the uh, Graham Slam coming up next. Don't miss that. TJ's Podcast. Our friend, the world famous Richard Takato, I'm sorry, Richard Takato is uh, here with us. And um, thank you so much for reaching out to Richard. We, he's telling us all the time about how many listeners are, are reaching out and saying, hey, show me about that refi and let's do some stuff like that. That's the way you put it, though. Show me about that refi. <laughs> what, what you got about that refi? <laughs> the, uh, so, the, I mean, the cool thing is, is, is Ace has said, we have a lot of options and we have, re, you know, I'm doing refinances for people, you know, we have people down in Greenville, North Carolina. We have them you know, all, you know, at the beach at South Carolina. We have them in Charlotte. And the main thing is to refinance, make their finances better, make it take the stress of every month. You know, if I save them $700 a month, $800 a month, it's a big deal for them. Yeah, it's a real big deal. $700 yeah. a month, that's fantastic. And again, yeah. we've talked about this before. Richard's a broker. That's how he gets more options than a bank. Yeah. He can do more. Just go to homewithrichard.com to get started. Homewithrichard.com, the Richard Takato Companies. Hey, it's Ace. And for a long time, we've told you about Neogenics, Charlotte's most trusted stem cell clinic, and how phenomenal a job they did helping me with my left wrist. Well, this is Neil. Neil Simler is a member of the Ace and TJ Radio family. Neil, you took the free consultation to have them check out your elbow and talk about what happened just when you went for the free consultation. Uh, They were very straightforward and let me know that they weren't going to treat any of my ailments if they weren't 100% sure that they were going to be able to effectively help my issue. And uh, never once were they pushy with trying to get me to spend more money and do, you know, the the higher end shots. Now, three months later, how do you feel? I'm 95% better, if not 100%. You know, it, it's just been one of the best decisions I've made. Do yourself a favor. Get out there as soon as possible. Set up your free consultation today at acetj.com slash neogenics. It's N-E-O-G-E-N-I-X. Neogenics, Charlotte's most trusted stem cell clinic. They say there are only two things certain in life. Sweet deals at sweet dreams and taxes. And only one of those is certain this month. Which one? The sweet deals at Sweet Dreams. What about the taxes? No sales tax the entire month of April at Sweet Dreams. Are you serious? Yeah. And don't call me Shirley. Love where you live, Lake Norman, and pay no sales tax during the month of April. Only at Sweet Dreams Furniture and Mattress. Back to TJ's podcast. Okay, the Graham Slam, where we go all over the social medias and find things that are uh, interesting and uh, also (laughs) debate-provoking. And I think this one um, fits into that category perfectly. So Riggins has this video of a woman going around and uh, videoing her. uh, What she does is she videos her co-worker, this one co-worker, um, eating lunch and talks about how 
nasty the food is that the woman brings in. Exactly. Right? Yeah, exactly. And, and it's like a whole yeah. series because she does it every day. Here. And I kind of feel sorry for the woman. She's <laughs> just trying to eat. And you got this other <laughs> crazy girl running around sticking a camera. How nasty is your food today? It's, it's get kind of a mean girl in the cafeteria type feel to me. Yeah. <laughs> here, here it is. Part three of Weird Things My Coworker Eats. <laughs> what do we have? Many. We have beefaroni with sugar cookies. Oh Try it. Just go like that. Go like that. Um. Hey, what do we have today? <laughs> um, Vienna sausage, Puerto Rico salchichas with peanut butter. Oh my god. Why? Oh my god. Why? <laughs> That's what it is. So, so what do you beefaroni. Guys see? She, my coworker always. Beefaroni with sugar cookies, and she's actually taking the beefaroni on a fork and putting it on a on a sugar cookie and eating it yeah okay uh i think i would eat that more than more than i would go for vienna sausages on uh, with peanut butter on. Ugh, that was stomach turning mm. and it, this is part three i mean some of the other things were just insane like combinations you've never heard of but it reminds me of that meme where somebody was like you know boneless wings are great when you don't have some bitch in your ear telling you they're not real chicken wings <laughs> <laughs> so you know to each his own but uh, that is disgusting vienna sausage is like drag through creamy peanut butter is ugh. okay well what did she call it did she call it puerto rican, puerto rican something? Chi chi cheese or something like i, I'm I thought chi cheese meant boobs i know yeah i, I couldn't tell i think it does <laughs> chi cheese <laughs> yeah i don't know sausages whatever the spanish word for sausages uh -huh. is i guess might be it but you, is, you don't like Vienna sausages? I've, you know, I've never had them. Yeah. But there was a kid in our class that used to eat them, and I remember him opening the can with the pole top mm -hmm. lid, and they, they were in, like, jelly. It wasn't well, even, like, a liquid. I remember it looking, like, gelatinous. It is. It's it's uh, the um, the grease that, oh. that has oh. formed that. You know, like if, if you have a ham left over yeah. and it has the little jelly on it, that's that's what it is. Oh. I'm sure, you know what, if I, if I tried it, I'm sure they'd be fine. Would you rather eat Vienna sausages just right out of the can or sardines out of the can? Sardines. Yeah. I'm, I like sardines. I want to try them. It's, yeah. every, it's very popular on social media mm -hmm. now to eat and they're sardines. Healthy. They're healthy. They're, that's what they all say. It's like, it's the perfect food. Mm -hmm. But the, God, does that look gross too? Oh. <laughs> sardines. Because you eat the bones and everything. Yeah. Oh. Mm hmm. Gnarly. It's just, it basically looks like you're eating bait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got the tail, or they cut the tails off? Cut mm. the heads and the tails off? Just the heads, just some the head. of them, oh. yeah. And a lot of people also on TikTok. Put them on a cranker. Yeah, people on TikTok eat um, smoked uh, oysters, uh -huh. which are also in a can. Yeah. They got, like, the sauce, and they put them on a saltine with some Tabasco. Mm-hmm. I thought, oof, I don't know. It's cheap, too, I think. Are they? Mm-hmm. Sardines are. Oof. But they also have some that are that are better. I mean, not not better, but more expensive. Like yeah. you can get some expensive sardines, Oof. capers. Yeah, all that. So no on the Vienna sausages with peanut butter. No, it's not for me. When was the last time you had Vienna sausages? Long time ago. Kid, right? But you know, but now they make them with in barbecue sauce, and you know, they oh, have really? different different flavors of them. But I mean, it's still. Still the same texture and flavor, just with some kind of a sauce on it. I picture it tasting like a cold hot dog. Um, a cold, um, softer, squishier hot dog. Oh. <laughs> okay. It's kind of, to me, it's kind of a cross between a weenie and bologna. Okay. Well, I like bologna. Yeah, I know you, you like that. I don't like bologna. <laughs> Which is surprising. Mm. Why? You seem pretty adventurous with m most meat things. Mm -hmm. you, you gave your wife deer on the night you proposed to her. Uh, it, it's odd that bologna would, and you like Braunschweiger. Yeah, liver I do like sausage, that. Yeah. So good. Hot mm -hmm. dogs. Yeah, I don't know any other meats that you don't really like or besides white meat chicken. So it's curious that bologna, it's, so, uh, it's salty, savory. Mm -hmm. And I'm surprised you didn't eat it as a kid. I just don't like the flavor of it. Really? Mm hmm. Uh, but yeah, I do like Braunschweiger. Oh, it's so but good. I didn't eat that growing up. My wife's Midwest 
family introduced me to that. Yeah. It's so good. Mm. But it is so gross looking. I mean, it's dark, like gray brown, yeah. processed meat. But It's liverwurst. Yeah. And mm. I didn't even know it's called Braun Schwager or whatever it's called. We always called it liver sausage, which mm-hmm. sounds even worse. But just on a piece of white bread with like uh, uh, hot pepper rings or salt Isn't pepper. liver sausage the same as liver mush? I, I thought I that's know. what people called liver mush was liver sausage or liver pudding. I've heard liver pudding. I don't know what the differences are. And I've never had liver mush. Yeah. I think I'd like it, though. Yeah, you fry liver mush like sausage. It looks like sausage on the outside, but when you when you bite into it, it's not like sausage on the inside. It's, <laughs> you know, yeah, I don't like it. But, I mean, it's a, it's a thing that is, it's a dish that's um, indigenous to the southeastern United States. It's not, wasn't where I was growing up in Louisiana. We didn't have that. <clears throat> Ugh. Um, and then what, what is this other thing? The, um, that woman who's trying to have a meeting and on the zoom and her dog's gulping out of the bowls. This is ridiculous. So, you know, everybody's still, every, a lot of jobs still let you work from home. That's not a surprise, but you got to figure out placement of your computer in relation to where your dog exists, because this is what it sounded like when she was trying to do a zoom call with her coworkers. The dog is there drinking out of a bowl. <laughs> and it goes, oh. Okay. Thanks, Jeff. Oh, I'm still. I see I'm muted. Okay. Um, that, you're hearing my dog. <laughs> <laughs> Her dog bowl is right next. <laughs> um, so I, do, I have some good still. news, too. So I heard you guys have good news, so I have some good news, too. Yeah, who puts the dog bowl right? You know how the dog drinks. You know what it sounds like. For 45 seconds to a minute. Yeah. Why Why do you have the computer and the dog bowl in the same area? Yeah, and, and, and the daughter is filming. It's like, well, get up and help your mom. Like, go move the dog away from the bowl or go move the bowls. You see your mom's trying to have, like, a business meeting. <laughs> I don't know. It's just crazy. That being said, I would love to work from home. I but you're stepping over your dog a hundred times a day. Mm-hmm. It's ridiculous. So um, if we had that story that we talked about in the regular old show today about the family that lost their dog a year ago and then turned up yeah. in Detroit. They live in San Diego and they they jumped a f- the first flight out of there to get to their dog in Detroit. Um, well, I know you would do it if if your dog went missing. Or, oh, I don't know, maybe. If your dog ran away or you just, you knew he wasn't dead, yep. but something had somebody had gotten him or you or he ran away, it's been a year, and somebody calls you and says, "Hey, we've we've got your dog in you know, whatever thousand miles away." Let's just say it's in Eugene, Oregon. <laughs> Are you going to get him? Yeah. Okay. So you wouldn't look at it as that opportunity like you always say, how you regret having a dog. You love him, but you regret it, and it's so much, you know, takes away your freedom and all of that. So you got, you'd gone a year with no dog, yeah. and you had the freedom. Yeah. It'd be the same thing. Like, it's a disruptor of your life. So it's been gone for a year. You Things settle down. You're like, oh, it's still alive, and I got to go get him. So it's the same exact feeling that you're experiencing now with a dog. It's like this is going to disrupt my life again, but you have a responsibility to go get that dog. Even after a year, I think so. statute of limitations. <laughs> I think so. I think so because you made a commitment to r- treat this animal well. Yeah, you know, but he I, ran away. Yeah, well, is that was that the scenario? That he ran away. Like obviously, he doesn't want to be here. Yeah. So I'm not going to, you know, lay down the money for a, a plane ticket. <laughs> To go get him. Well, is that family that has him asking you to come get him? Well, they wouldn't have let me know, yeah. right? Yeah. So what do you? What can you tell that family? Like, I don't care. I'm not coming to get him. I, I would just start. You don't have a choice. Yeah. No habla English. <laughs> I don't have know. Number. <laughs> you have to. Do you think you would have already gotten another dog by then? No. Yeah. No. Because you're not. You, you're not ever getting another dog. I don't. I. I don't see it. I don't mm-hmm. see it, but, but my, maybe I, maybe I have a, a 
change of heart when he when he goes. Mm-hmm. Because everybody's been posting videos of their dead dog stuff on TikTok this last Why? week. I don't know, but there's a song that's being used to kind of like say goodbye to your pet. And it's like the saddest thing you've ever heard. And I don't know, people are just sharing like photo montages of like his last day. It's like our last meal together. And it's like heart wrenching. Mm. Well, I just happened to have um, a story of an encounter with a dog that I had Saturday. Um, and dog people are not going to like this story. So Uh-oh. go ahead and prepare yourselves Uh-oh. to write some kind of comment or whatever you got to do. But, I mean, this is real life, people. It's real life. And you call yourself a fanatico, but you're going to get mad at me over some little something. We'll just give you the test coming up next. More of TJ's podcast is coming up. When it comes to losing weight, sometimes you don't even know where to start. You know that it needs to happen, but you need some help. Well, you start by going to acetj.com slash weight loss and ordering Calitrin. Calitrin is scientifically proven to help you lose weight, and it is not a drug. It is not a drug. Repeat that. So here's what you do. You go to acetj.com slash Calitrin. Order three months, and then you'll get three months free. Four months, four months free. That's how it works with Calitron. Winter is here, which means you're just going to stay inside and not do anything fun and exciting, right? No, that is wrong. Because this year, you're going to go to acetj.com slash Gaston and see all of the incredible things that you can do right now in Gaston County. Everything is laid out for you from things to do to restaurants to bars to shopping to unique weekend activities. And we'll get you ready for the spring and the summer with a list of all their great festivals. Find all of this and much more at acetj.com slash Gaston. If you're so frustrated because you're having to run around all the time, you're so busy, you feel like you're not getting your family something great to eat, then you need Culver's. It's the perfect thing for you. Always made to order fresh, hot ingredients all day, every day. And not only do they have the freshest ingredients all day, every day, but they are a part of the community. They're proud to be a part of the Indian Trail community where they're under new ownership. Belmont, University Area, Salisbury. Make them a part of your daily routine. Make it your new neighborhood spot. Short waits for the freshest food in town. Get details at A. TJ.com slash Culver's. Welcome back, world, to TJ's podcast. Hey, hey, hey. All right. Fanaticos. Make sure you go to uh, acetj.com slash fanatico and um, give us the feedback we've been asking for fill out a little survey there we want to know what you think about the new podcast i know a lot of you don't think much of it anymore after riggins put that promo out there about me saying that millennials are soft i wanted to talk (laughs) about that (coughs) that was awesome i completely forgot about that yeah we need to talk about that okay that was crazy yeah did you see all the the I mean, it was like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people that don't follow us. I mean, that just kind of went out into the ether. Well, you want me to be honest with you, Brother Riggins? Yeah. I was watching. I looked at a few of the comments, and sometimes I get confused because whenever you post something and then I repost it, and, it, yeah. you know, I, I can't keep up with – sometimes I'll click on it and it'll say no likes. And then the next day you'll go, oh, my God, that thing blew up. And you're, So I just – I don't know. But I did read enough of the comments to know that the people who were critical of me uh, made fat jokes about me. So <laughs> I kind of – yeah. So I stopped. That's the way they – that's what yeah, they did. Yeah, I stopped. Uh, because they, at one point I'd had a few beers, and I looked at it kind of late at night, and I just started uh, going off on the way that person looked. One sure. of them said that. Natural. And then I deleted it. Yeah. You, know. you feel – feel a different way about it. but um that's exactly what con- that's exactly mm-hmm. what you're supposed to do put out something i mean the way people scroll now if you can get them to stop and comment on it like you're in their head already you already mm-hmm. won the battle you don't even need to say anything. yeah but so that was that amazing did that did work there. that one that's what i'm talking about that worked do more okay. of that right. but i understand that the mental toll that kind of takes on you when something like that blows up the way it does because mm-hmm. yeah you get a lot of negative negative responses to it and and also proving my point their comments proved my point that uh yeah they're soft yeah in in some ways 
Mm-hmm. Their arguments were odd. It, some of some of them were smarter than others, but most people it's like you're an idiot. You don't know anything. Yeah. So, okay. But the ones saying you know that you're fat and talk about somebody being soft, your neck's soft. <laughs> you know, whatever that was. <laughs> I I thought that was kind of funny. But. Kind of funny. So anyway, here's something that pri- probably is going to upset people. Um. So. Over the weekend, we were in Mount Pleasant, North uh, South Carolina, which over the weekend, we were in South Carolina in a town called Mount Pleasant, and it is just over the bridge from Charleston. It's in the Charleston area. And um, we have friends who live there. Their names are uh, Kathy and Anthony, and they love sitting around patios they try every restaurant in town i mean they just are they're great hosts when you go visit them because they know all types of restaurants all types of bars all you know they they could be on the the what do you call it the tourism bureau i mean they're just great so they took us to this place the weather was mild and it was an outdoor area like a beer garden kind of thing and they had these long picnic tables and so like we sat at one end of the picnic table there were four of us and then these other people came up it was a guy two women and uh, they said can we sit here or is anybody else sitting here said no sit down you know we're sharing a table but we're not right next to each other yeah well the guy had a dog on a leash it was uh one of those red colored golden retrievers Mm -hmm. beautiful beautiful and i love i love a golden retriever i love most dogs but you know how i am about the whole concept of people not being able to do anything without taking their dogs along and it's a beautiful day people sitting out here having a beer they're watching ball games it's just a fun atmosphere and tons of people had brought their dogs dogs you know kind of messing with each other and they're having to corral them and you know all of this well they sit down and a few minutes go by and i feel something up against my leg well the dog is under the table brushing up against my leg laying on my foot you know just whatever i'm like okay fine so the next thing you know i'm talking and i feel the dog's head come up between my legs Hello. And look at me. (laughs) And I'm thinking, okay, now I could pet this dog because it is a pretty dog and I like dogs. Or I can I can try to get a message to the owner of the dog. I chose the latter. So this guy looks at me and he goes, oh, (laughs) Uh, that's a, a bonus you get for drinking at this bar. The bonus is my dog is in your space and and coming up between your legs. And I just looked down at the dog and I looked at him and I went, oh, yeah. And then I just turned and kind of guided the dog's head away from me. And you would have thought that I had ripped that dog's eyes out the way that guy looked at me and pulled that leash to keep his dog away from me after that. So now I'm the bad guy. (laughs) I'm sitting there minding my own business. I didn't bring a dog with me. Kathy and Anthony have a dog that I love. And you know what else? Charlie loves me. Yeah. So I could have easily said, let's take Charlie off for the day with us come on we could have had charlie there but i didn't have charlie there i didn't want a dog up on me so you come sit down and all of a sudden i'm supposed to just be thrilled that your dog a dog i don't even know is between my legs while i'm sitting here having a uh, an overly priced beer (laughs) no i don't think so so here come the hate mails. Oh, I'm sure. I hear them in there. <laughs> I hear them coming. They're printing out. Um, but I didn't. I didn't do anything bad to the dog. I just didn't make over the dog. 
oh hey yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I didn't do anything I just kind of just got at his head out uh, you know off of my private area yeah <laughs> is what I did yeah and and I'm sure that when we walked away what a oh what a piece of shit that guy is yeah yeah for sure not you know oh well that guy is he must not be a dog person or well i should have been watching no apology no no well oh, i'm sorry he's just I, I i gave him a little too much room on the leash that way come on dog or whatever his name come on snoopy uh nothing like that it was <laughs> that's a bonus you get for drinking at this bar <laughs> <laughs> he didn't know who he's talking to. <laughs> not to me buddy uh. Mm. Yeah, people people love their dog. Well, here I'll give you an example. I was walking around town yesterday, and this couple had a one year old basset hound. And the guy walks up with his dog. I'm Riley is seated on my side where he's supposed to be, and they start mm -hmm. letting this basset hound pull him towards me. And the owner goes, "Can he say hi?" <laughs> I go, "No, he's a dick." Pointing at my <laughs> own dog, and then they stop. So I don't know. Maybe the way you you know turned away from the dog hurt his feelings or something like that hurt the dog's feelings or the guy's the guy's feelings, feelings. you know what because you expect everybody to love your dog like you do right and that's my point yeah that's why i did it to begin with the wake-up <laughs> call not everybody wants your dog up on them the yeah. way you want your dog up on them i agree and i and i still say and this is the thing that's going to get them mad if you are going out for the day to enjoy the you know the the outdoor bar the patios hang out whatever in a situation where there's no nothing built in for a dog like even at a you want to take them to the beach with you great you can take them for a run on the beach they can go out and play in the water and whatever but if you're taking them to a bar, why are you doing that? Why do you, when you go get ready to go to the bar, go eat lunch, do whatever, why do you stop and go, oh, well, let's, let's take Bruiser with us. Hey, I'm going to take Bruiser because you know, it's just going to add, add something for you to have to take, take, uh, to deal with. You're going to have to, yeah. you know, get him water. You're going to have to keep him from messing with other people. You're going to have to have him on the leash and walking him through the parking lot and getting into a place that will allow dogs on the patio. You know, it's a lot of trouble that you're bringing on to yourself rather than just say, I'm only going to be gone a couple of hours. I'm going to leave Bruiser here in the house in the air conditioning where he can just chill and do whatever he wants to do. You, you hook that leash to that dog and put it in the car to take it to a bar with you because you want the attention. You are getting attention by proxy. That's what you do it for. That's why you put that dog on a leash and take him to the bar and the grocery store and the, uh, and the restaurants with you. That's why. Because you want the attention that the dog brings you. Boom. Believe that. Mm. Would that work as, as a promo? Yeah, that should work. That'll do the <laughs> trick. <laughs> <laughs> but here, well, you also, were you at a dog bar? Was it a dog bar? No. It wasn't. No. I'm surprised they brought you there if they, they knew dogs were going to be there. It's like, well, I, I would not take but you guys there. But it doesn't, if it, if the dog had not have been all up on me and the yeah. guy acted the way he did, it would have been fine. Those dogs weren't bothering me. Yeah. And I don't, and I, I but it, it doesn't bother me. People have their dogs at their tables with them or whatever. And I don't, it's not, you know, coming in anything affecting me. I don't care. But I do wonder though, why? I mean, I can have that thought of why do you do that? And, and it doesn't necessarily mean I hate dogs. I don't want to be around any dogs. Right. It's a cultural thing with me. It's a, when did our culture become this? When did the culture 
decide that dogs were going to be at restaurants. And some of it is when I see the, the assistants, the vests on the dog, whatever you call them, emotional support animals and all that, then I start thinking, okay, uh, is this really a, a, a medical situation for you? Or are you just so selfish that you're trying to skirt the rules? just so you can have your dog with you at all times, even when dogs are not allowed. But I don't, that's the whole point. I don't look at the dogs and go, get those dogs out of here. There's a dog, wait, out. there's a dog down there. Get it out of here. I'm not like that at all. But if somebody sits beside me with a dog and the dog is up on me when I didn't ask the dog to be up on me. And it's not a problem I have with the dog. Right. It's the problem I have with the attention-seeking owner of the dog. Because that's what he thought. He's just like, it's a bonus you get for drinking at this bar. Then he would have gotten attention. I would said, oh, my God, he's so sweet. He's so beautiful. Look at him. How old is he? Uh, you know, all of the questions. Right. I just wasn't giving in to all that. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> And just because of that, I get misunderstood so much when people think that I'm grouchy. Well, that's that's certainly one <laughs> one of the arguments. Yeah, I, I hear you though. But it's one of those situations where society is fine the way it is. For years and years and years and years, things something can go on in society that's a tradition or a norm in the United States or whatever. And then somebody comes along and wants to change it or does something to put changes in motion and then puts the onus on the people who lived all of those years going one way to prove to the new people why they shouldn't change the rules. No, you should prove why you should change the rules. That's why I'm saying I want to hear people say why they have to take their dogs to the grocery store and to get a beer and to the ball game and to, you know, whatever else. Why do you have to have your dog with you all the time? Well, shouldn't you make that, shouldn't you ask that of the businesses that are letting the dogs in? Isn't it more the onus on them? Cause I, th no, like, no, because I, I, most of the businesses are probably going with the demand. Like so, well, sure. It's people, a business. It's a bit. They see right. opportunities. But to make uh, but money. just the mindset of why? What what are you thinking? What is what is your uh, thought process for saying I'm going to go get a beer? We'll be gone for a little while, and I may run by the grocery store, and and then they, maybe um, exchange these uh, whatever these pants I got at Walmart, whatever. Yep. So, come on, Chuckles, we're going. You want to go for a ride? You want to go for a ride? Yeah. Why do you do that? What is it's the... Fun. Huh? It's, it's fun. I, yeah, I would like to have Riley in here every day at work. Not because I'm looking for attention, but I like him having him with me. I get the I get the urge okay. to want to bring your dog. I do get that. Okay. Well, that's all I was but asking. I, I'm asking for yeah. why... What is the thought process that makes you... But would you want to take him to a bar with you or lunch with you? No, and all but that? that's not my thing. I don't like going to dog bars because I don't care about right. other people's dogs. These are not dog bars. I'm talking about or just wh where people, where any they, patio. If they allow dogs on there, I, I yeah. don't really want to be there. Okay. Because I don't, I don't care about other people's dogs. Right. Okay. And I also... And I, and I get your opinion. Mm. I wouldn't want... If I was just going to have a beer, I don't need seven dogs running up in between my legs. I'm not mm. looking for that. And... I am still standing by my prediction that within the next, within the next few years, uh, if anybody wants to sit on a patio and eat their meal or have drinks, they're going to have to get in line behind dog owners because they're going to reserve most of those seats for dog owners. And they may have a table or two for people to sit out there who don't have dogs. I'm talking about dog bars all the way to you know if there if there's outdoor seating at Bubba's Biscuitville or whatever reserved for dogs maybe two tables for people who don't have dogs so you'll have to wait or either eat inside and once they do that 
women who don't have dogs are going to hit the fan. That's where we're going to really have a conflict. Because they love patios. Oh, love yeah. Outdoor seating. Mm-hmm. If you tell, you tell um, I don't know, four women who went to met and met for lunch that they can't eat outside on a beautiful day because uh, you're saving all of those tables for dogs. Yeah. Oh. oh. It's going down. Yeah. It's going to be bad business. <laughs> okay. Good to be back. So good to be back from the vacay. And thank you to all of you TJ fanaticos, every single one of you, millions and millions out there. Thanks for listening to the show. Loving me. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Serving the world. It's TJ's podcast.